to another new episode of the Last Wave Podcast. Uh, we go over things like UFOs, conspiracy theories, nerd stuff, and basically everything paranormal. Going to be an interesting episode today. We're going to do things a little different, as you can tell by the intro. So, first and foremost, I kind of failed a little bit. Uh, this should be a four-part series, but it's going to be a three-part series because I messed up on the show notes. So here we are. I basically didn't write down half of an episode or emailed myself the wrong one. Regardless, you're going to get a slightly obscure list and it should equal out to still probably a little over over 20 movies because I do some trilogies and things like that. So either way, we'll still be fine. But again, it will be a three-part series. And real quick, I did want to mention uh, what we're doing for our other channel, Last Wave Games. Last Wave Games has actually become an official extralife.org uh, team. And basically what that means, extralife.org, is a donation service. It's like a charity that uh, sends money and helps out uh, children's hospitals. But it's for YouTube gamers, Twitch streamers, things of that nature. So I wanted to put that out there and definitely do a couple episodes to promote that. Um, I'll post the link in the description as well as on our Facebook page. It's real easy to donate. You can do as much or as little as you can. Uh, just a really good cause. I even got to pick what hospital. So we're doing a local North Carolina Children's Hospital as well. A really, really cool charity. But if you can't do anything, then anyway, thanks for listening. And we are happy to have you. So uh, the first movie we're going to go over that I watched is Hellbenders. Hellbenders is a really interesting movie from uh, 2013. It's basically got one of my favorite actors in it and he's one of those actors that is he's a he's a that guy actor like you know him you know you've seen him but you don't know where <laughs> he's one of those actors his name is Clifton Collins Jr. and he's like I say, he's been in a lot of movies but an absolute ton of movies but he is the main character in this movie well one of the main characters in here this movie follows a group of exorcists that go through uh, basically their city and exercise demons. But, you know, as normal as that sounds, this is definitely not normal. Uh, these guys are what's called hellbound exorcists. And that basically means that they sin in order to have power over the demons, basically getting them on their level or even worse. So, I mean, this movie is super campy it's super interesting basically these exorcists i mean they even keep track of who's sinned and that kind of stuff and for for some movies you know hearing certain lines you know exactly you know what kind of movie this is going to be but a couple of the funnier lines especially it was, was early on in the movie but it was like uh eating cake could be gluttony but that's some candy ass sinning or, I really hate that guy, like Nazi cake hate. I don't know what their obsession is with cake, but either way, that's some of the stuff that you'll hear in the movie. So, not what I expected when I when I started the movie, but I was definitely along for the ride. Um, apparently, these exorcists, again, are hellbound, and again, that gives them power over the demons, but they're sinning. If they find a demon that they can't deal with, they will take the demon into their bodies and kill themselves, therefore going to hell, dragging the demon to hell with them. So that is a, an absurd premise, but definitely, you know, turns the whole trope of exorcist movies really on its head. And this movie does not get any less crazy as you go through it. It is, however, really enjoyable. Uh, there's some crazy twists uh, on movies of this genre. Uh, the, again, there's mentions of old gods there's pot smoking tons of cursing it is definitely not a family friendly movie but a really horribly fantastic you know indie style movie to watch with a group of friends 100 percent recommend this movie it's a great way to start your horror movie night or end it you know nice on a, on a nice funny note so definitely recommend giving this one a shot uh, the next movie on the list is dead rising watchtower uh, this is one of two. The second one I did not watch, so I just watched the first one. Uh, but this movie shares the same name as the infamous group of zombie killing video games. Uh, it starts out very campy and reminiscent of the video games. 
One of the best parts of the games is that nearly everything can be a weapon to fight off the zombies. In the first two minutes of the movie, a toaster and a muffler pipe are both used. Now, at first I wasn't sure if it would be a really faithful movie, because most video game movies are not. But it actually name drops some stuff um, as far as items, you know, things from the world, and people from the games are actually in the movie, well, characters, you know what I mean. But anyway, this movie is actually way better than I expected. I certainly was prepared for a horrible zombie, you know, sci-fi Saturday night movie. But this one is fun. The effects are pretty decent. The characters are solid. Um, a handful of random semi-famous people that just pop up in the movie make the movie even better. But the movie is slightly longer than it probably needs to be. But there are some twists and turns along the way. The pace is good. Uh, I would certainly suggest this one as another good way to start or, again, finish, you know, a nice, a nice horror movie evening. So, as I said, that is basically my half a page. There should be two other movies on there, but I can't remember for the life of me what they were. I've watched so many scary movies in the past two weeks. Um, anyway, so we're going to move on. Our next one is actually a trilogy. Um, it's definitely recommended. Uh, this one is the Mimic Trilogy. And I know I said I wasn't going to have any more movies that I had previously seen. But I only saw the first one. And I saw it, I don't know, years ago. Because they're fairly old movies. Um, but I saw that these were viewable on Amazon Prime. And I could not help myself. Uh, the Mimic movies were really really good uh mimic the first one when i saw it scared the absolute crap out of me as a kid but i loved it it's a super unique premise and idea um, as far as combing creature combining creature movies with slasher movies with a mysterious virus i mean it's it kind of combines a little bit of everything and it's directed by guillermo guillermo del toro uh, so there's really no way you can lose the first one came out in 1997, and by the way, the 90s had some of my favorite, and in my opinion, the best creature movies, because they were just starting to get a little CGI, but still most of the stuff was either animatronic or it was real, you know what I mean? So that, in my opinion, that really, really set the 90s aside as a great time for movies and horror movies, especially. Uh, the main theme is that a thickness, or a thickness, a sickness comes to New York and is spread through cockroaches. Uh, it affects children, uh, killing off a large number of them. Um, sadly, so I mean, it's a pretty down way to start the movie, but um, I, for one, am not a fan of movies where kids are in danger or harmed, but you got to get the point across, I understand. And Guillermo del Toro, he definitely, you know, was it Pan's Labyrinth? I'm going to sound like an idiot if that's not right. But it centers around a child. So there's a lot of symbolism and stuff like that in his movies. But anyway, so this entomologist creates a new type of bug, more or less to combat the current roach population. It's basically a Frankenstein bug, and it releases a certain type of pheromones or hormones that <laughs> kill off a lot of the other cockroaches. <clears throat> Excuse me. Things start to go very wrong in a couple of years. These bugs were supposed to die. Uh, they weren't supposed to live more than six months, but they do. And let's just say there are some mutations that take place. There's also a secretive killer on the loose at this time. And there's just something about the stance in my eyes that the killer has. Uh, the director is a master of that. I mean, it's, it's a classic stance, like old, old school horror. Always, you know, the killer is always in shadow wide shouldered lower body is very thin very vintage dracula in a in a cape kind of thing um but i really can't suggest uh the first movie enough and it is old enough to be super freaking cheap so it should be an easy one to watch and if you don't have amazon again you should be able to find it at your local dvd store um again you can rent it from probably anywhere they're all super cheap um, I think the newest one is early 2000s. So it's a great, great trilogy to get into. The second and third one are also pretty solid. So the main one I wanted to focus on was the first one because that's the one you really need to see to kind of understand what's going on. If you just start at number two, you'll be, well, you'll be pretty confused until later in the movie. But number one and number two 
are really really good number three you know it's not as it's not quite as good but number one and number two for sure are definitely definitely fantastic so you should definitely check this one out uh continuing on uh, another trilogy the unbreakable trilogy um this one i'm super amped i was super amped to actually finish uh this trilogy uh these movies are from m night Shyamalan, uh, the director of signs sixth sense and unbreakable and this trilogy as well unbreakable was one of his top movies uh, dropping in 2000 it was not necessarily a horror movie from the start uh, more of a <clears throat> sci-fi thriller twister i would say um and all of his movies are i don't know except for signs maybe six cents i mean they're not necessarily horror movies they're really hard to define i guess you could call them thriller but they're more just ominous than anything i mean that's that's really the only good way to describe uh, m night Shyamalan movies but this one involves a guy who is seemingly unkillable mixed with a storyline about a man who is seemingly made of glass his bones break really easy that kind of stuff um it's kind of an under the table supernatural superhero tale in a way um anyway again regarded as one of his best and i definitely agree so that movie carries us to uh i believe it was 2017 and that takes us to split which is the second one and it's the more mainstream i mean these movies are more mainstream um but you know again i wanted to do movies that i haven't seen and i hadn't seen split or glass which is the third one so again, not necessarily that they're scary, you know, terrifying horror movies, but they are ominous thrillers. I mean, it's definitely good to watch around this time, especially turn the lights out. You know, you don't know what's going to happen in a lot of them. M. Night is really famous for twists and turns throughout his movies. So um, definitely they're, they're worth a watch. But I was really excited to finish this trilogy and they fit in well again with not an incredibly terrifying, but still thrilling Halloween evening. Um, in Split, three young girls are taken hostage in a really scarily poignant theme nowadays. Uh, the person that took them, played by the great James McAvoy, turns out to have quite a large number of alternate personalities, um, all different and unique. And it, it, even men, women, different races, all, all this stuff. So his acting chops are really on display as this deranged kidnapper goes through these personalities while interacting with the girls. Uh, one one of them is a nine-year-old boy i mean it's it's crazy he's he's such an incredible actor the cool thing about split is no one knew it was a sequel as the movie did not come out until 16 years or so after the original now we know because it is a mainstream knowledge but it was a really fantastic twist and you you didn't even know it was a sequel until the very end of the movie so that was fantastic but anyway, Split is pretty damn crazy. Again, the personalities that James McAvoy goes through are so off the wall and unsettling. Um, speaking of acting, the main young lady is, this, is the main actress from an earlier film that I listed, The Witch. So I hope she grows up to be mentally okay because her first few acting gigs have been rough. Um, the trilogy definitely holds up with the second installment. Now, we move on to Glass, which is the most recent movie. Um, it actually picks up a couple weeks after the second movie ends. Uh, basically, the men from the first movie are in this one as well. So again, it continues and finishes the trilogy. Basically, the one who was in the first movie, Bruce Willis' character, by the way, who could not die, attempts to confront the multiple personalities or the beast uh basically the james mcavoy character from split as he is still kidnapping girls um this movie also includes samuel jackson's character from the first movie um which is glass which is the one who his bones break really really easy and but he's very very smart and just through a series of events he basically is able to bring all of this together there's i don't know there there's you know an underlying theme of people trying to tell them that they're actually just crazy, that they don't have any abilities, that they're not unique, they're just mentally unhinged. I mean, it's it's a really interesting spin on movies that I have yet to see, or I have not seen in a long time. 
again, they're just kind of told to believe that they're all delusional and they don't have any powers. Again, this one is different in a lot of ways. Um, again, I will say that James McAvoy kills it again. Uh, and most people probably know him more mainstream as uh, Professor X on the newer X-Men movies. He was in Wanted. He's been in a lot of movies. Um, but this one, you, know, you get to see the full range of the 20 plus personalities in the man's head. Uh, multiple of them are women, again, different races, even different languages. I mean, it's bananas. Uh, Sarah Paulson is also in this movie. She's from American Horror Story. Many people will know her. Uh, she plays the doctor that is trying to prove that they are all delusional. I really don't like her character in this, but I guess I am biased, I suppose, because you want to believe in the supernatural and not just have a doctor explain it away by science. So this movie is a slow build, but worth it. <clears throat> uh, it's super, super solid movie and a great ending to the trilogy. Um, again, it's not scary, um, but again, it's just kind of ominous. I don't know any other word to describe M. Night Shyamalan movies other than ominous. So that's basically what we got. <laughs> um, but I certainly recommend this trilogy. It's great for a more suspenseful movie night. Um, these movies can be found for rent or purchase. And some of them are on streaming. Like I said, they're all on Amazon. And I believe they're super cheap uh, to rent, which everyone's aren't streaming. Uh, they're only $3 or so to rent. So definitely check out this trilogy. Um, it's well worth it well worth it so that brings us to our final movie on the list and once i watched it i was very very glad that it was the last one because this movie is just insane this movie is called the void uh, this movie was released in 2017 it starts out and stays ominous and and scary you know and tense well not well, it is scary, but I would say definitely tense um, throughout the whole movie. A small town cop finds a young man stumbling out of the woods. He takes the man to a local hospital, which is nearly abandoned due to a fire that happened recently. But a local, but a skeleton crew of working, you know, working nurses and a doctor help him out. Uh, things quickly go from crap to holy crap to what the hell is this movie? <laughs> um, some of the acting is a little, you know, interesting and iffy, but I only recognize one person, and it's a, one of the smaller actors from the Hulu show Letterkenny. So, it's from you know, I have no idea who these people were, but you know, for for I guess a B movie kind of you know actor group, they they did pretty solid. Anyway, as far as as effects go, this is probably one of the best movies I have had on the list. Um, I mean, this is the effects in this movie are top of the line. For sure, I definitely, definitely enjoyed it. It's not a whole lot of CGI and all that shenanigans. But um, honestly, again, I'm glad this one was last. To surmise this movie, it, this one just, let's just say I uttered what the hell or this shit is bananas a good 10 times watching this movie. And to me, that is the mark of a good horror movie. Uh, this one will certainly mess with you in a number of ways. It's a horribly great cocktail of the thing. Mixed with some occult stuff, a dash of Cthulhu mixed in. I mean, it is just so much going on in this movie. Again, imagine effects from the movie The Thing with Kurt Russell. You know, there's I just can't explain it. You definitely have to see it. This one was on Amazon. I'm sure you can get it in other areas as of from 2017. It's called The Void, V-O-I-D. Probably recommend this one as like one of the it's definitely a top three on the list. This one, um, I believe The Honeymoon was on the list. I think that was episode two. That one is is 100% worth watching. All of the trilogies I mentioned, the Mimic trilogy, if you've never seen it, um, that, that those are actually pretty scary, especially the first one, as it is directed by the infamous Guillermo del Toro. So again, a lot of good movies on here. Uh, this was pretty fun to do. I really enjoyed making these little lists. I really enjoyed watching some of these scary movies. I didn't enjoy watching some of them, I'll be real honest. But again, there's plenty plenty on the list to pick from. Again, if I was going to go top five, I would go probably The Witch, The Fourth Kind. I, those are the first two that I did because obviously they're there for a reason. Uh, the Void, The Honeymoon, 
and just probably toss in the Mimic trilogy just for the heck of it. But yeah, check out the check out the videos. Let's them. There's tons of good movies on here. Tons of good stuff. There's some funny ones, some you know, some scary ones, some intense ones, some thrillers, all kinds of good stuff. Again, let me bring up extralife.org. Check that out. I'll try to post the link everywhere that I can. Um, that's a really, really great charity. I'm super excited to be able to work with them um, and try to do some streaming events, try to do some live events uh, as far as gaming and stuff like that to get them more notoriety and to get, and I don't deal with any of the money. The money does not go to me in any way. It does not go to the podcast or the gaming channel. It goes directly to them. We just support them. That's really all we do. Try to get, you know, try to get our audience to help out a great cause. So either way, again, we're done. We're done with the scary movies. Happy Halloween. Hope everyone enjoyed. Thanks for listening. And we'll catch you on the next episode.